Can I welcome members to the 15th meeting in 2018 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Um, Alison Harris has submitted her apologies. Uh, the noise, uh, the noise is uh, a stream of officials pouring in. Uh, can I welcome the uh, ministers uh, to the meeting? Uh, before the evidence session begins, there's one piece of business that we must decide first, and that's a decision on taking uh, business in private. It's proposed the committee takes item three in private, and that's consideration of the evidence that we're about to hear. Um, do we agree to take that in private? Okay, so we'll move on to agenda item two, which is the European Union withdrawal bill. Uh, supplementary legislative consent mem memorandum. Um, we have before us David Mundell, Secretary of State for Scotland, and Chloe Smith, Minister for the Constitution in the Cabinet Office. Can I welcome you both? Uh, I realise you've already been through a gruelling session. Um, I sat at the back, so I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment today. Um, but thanks for coming. Um, you'll appreciate the tight timescale in which the committee has to consider and report on the supplementary LCM uh, so it's, we're really grateful that you've you've come along um, in terms of the committee's approach our role is to ensure that appropriate powers are delegated to Scottish ministers and that there is effective scrutiny of secondary legislation um, so our, our questions today will will stem from that um, now as I said I, I, I did sit in on, on the earlier session um, I just wanted to ask um, one question around that. Um, I wasn't clear uh, from some of the answers you gave, Mr. Mundell, um, but we, you were describing uh, discussions, negotiations between uh, yourself and uh, Ms. Mr. Russell um, and the Welsh Government, but in relation to Mr. Russell, um, was it your view that you had an agreement um, with Mr. Russell that he then had, he then had to go and get cleared, but did you think you had an agreement with him? No, Mr Russell made it clear that he has always made it clear that he wasn't the decision maker in the process. So uh, we didn't have an expectation that the arrangement that had been discussed with Mr Russell could be agreed by Mr Russell, uh, and he never, he never led us to believe that. So we knew that when he took the arrangement back uh, from the discussions that he'd had, uh, with uh, Mark de Rakeford and David Liddington and officials had had uh, that, that that arrangement would require the agreement of uh, the First Minister. So we were always clear about that and we don't, you know, I'd never ever suggested okay. that we had an agreement with Mr Russell and he uh, reneged on that. That is not the case. Mr Russell was always absolutely clear as to where the lines of authority lay. Okay, that's, that's very useful. Um, so we're going to get into the, the questions uh, straight away that this committee um, has to deal with so that we have a, a different nature to the ones you dealt with earlier. Um, so we're considering the delegated powers uh, um, um, proposed in the EU withdrawal bill as amended, and there were amendments that last night, uh, and whether the bill provides for effective scrutiny of those powers by the Scottish Parliament. The bill provides for the concurrent exercise of powers by UK and Scottish ministers to fix deficiencies in retained EU law. So can you tell us um, what coordination and cooperation exists between the governments um, in relation to delivering the proposed programme of legislation by exit day? And is it indeed deliverable in the 10 months remaining? Yes, good work, John. I'll, I'll um, ha happy to, to begin our answers. Um, uh, yes, we do think it's deliverable. I mean, it will be challenging, with, without a doubt. I think you've probably heard some of the uh, figures um, uh, discussed openly already. You know, we are talking about many hundreds, actually, of, of, of secondary uh, pieces of secondary legislation that, that need to be done. Now, that's a um, that's a, a UK figure rather than specifically a, a, a Scottish Parliament figure, but but uh, that's just to give a sense of, of scale. Now, many of those, without doubt, will will of course need to be properly coordinated across uh, devolved uh, administrations, uh, and 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 obviously that is administrations plural. We are um, uh, extremely keen to to continue the strong level of, of, of cooperation that we've had uh, at official level uh, and and I mean and I will say uh, you know between the administrations at, at every level actually to be able to do what needs to be done 
Uh, I mean, obviously, the context in which we come here today is that, unfortunately, we don't, uh, at this point, have have the, uh, the the agreement of the Scottish government to the, the sort of the full package of what we're talking about here. But underpinning that situation actually is a lot of good quality work, which uh, I am confident will will allow us to get the the necessary. Uh, work done, and I think actually you'd, you'd see reference to that um, uh, through some of the, the papers and the, the correspondence on this subject. You know, you, you, we do see, I think, the, the leaders in the in these fields saying uh, that we recognise the amount of what needs to be done and that we'll work together to do so. And one thing I, I would certainly uh, convene, I'd like to give the committee a reassurance. Although you know we're all familiar with what might appear in the media uh, and and what politicians say, there are really strong and good working relations between UK government officials and Scottish government uh, yes. officials. Uh, uh, and uh, on a whole range of issues, there are detailed discussions. I've also sought to ensure that there was also detailed en engagement with parliamentary officials uh, here and to ensure uh, that this parliament and the presiding officer were also uh, updated in relation to uh, how uh, arrangements would impact on them. Okay, thank you. Neil Finlay. Um, where there's an agreement reached between UK and the Scottish governments that, that the UK ministers should make regulations to correct deficiencies, what opportunities will there be for this Parliament to um, scrutinise uh, any resulting legislation that comes from that process? Well, as the convener would he would he would hear, I, um, I said that whether or not, uh, Mr Findlay, we reach agreement uh, we will abide by the agreement that we've reached with um, the Welsh uh, government, uh, and that is that where regulations are brought forward in relation to uh, Clause 11 of the EU Withdrawal Bill, we would seek uh, the consent of this Parliament to those a, uh, regu to those regulations. So Parliament would be uh, have the opportunity to scrutinise and debate uh, those uh, regulations to deliver. A, uh, a uh, and to deliver a decision. If that decision was not to agree, then under the agreement, um, a, 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 a report would be laid before Parliament setting out the position of the Scottish uh, Parliament in relation to uh, that matter. So the, uh, are you aware that there's a, you know, there's a protocol being developed in the Parliament for that? Uh, uh, you know, for that scenario, mm -hmm. um, and you know, do you anticipate there being ample time for this Parliament to scrutinise anything that comes forward? I, I think there will be. I don't think that every, uh, you know, I don't think that we're going to uh, uh, pretend uh, that there isn't going to be a heavy workload. Mm -hmm. That that would, you know, that, that wouldn't be correct. But. I think that it will be a manageable workload. One other thing I, I think we would say is that it isn't necessarily the case that some of that all of the issues, for example, on the list of 24 issues that, have been, that would be subject to UK-wide frameworks, would necessarily be dealt with in that regulatory way. Some might be the subject of primary legislation, which would then follow exactly the same route as it does just now, where a legislative consent motion would come forward in, in the usual way. Uh, um, because it might, the, the view might be it would be better, um, for example, you know, in some areas to have primary legislation rather than regulation. Okay. Did, did you know about the protocol which officials have worked up? I, w I was aware of it, but I, I, I'm aware of it in the general sense, uh, convener. I'm not aware, I, I wouldn't be able to be questioned on the detail of it, I'm afraid. Okay. It's probably worth having a look at some point. Tom Arthur. Thank you, Convener. Good morning, Secretary of State. Good morning, Minister. Um, I would like to know, um, with regards to deficiencies that need to be remedied, mm -hmm. what's the UK's government view as to how many of those remedies will have to be through UK regulations as opposed to regulations made in the Scottish Parliament? Um, and in what circumstances specifically do you envisage that scenario arising? Yeah, the, the short answer is I, I can't give you a numerical answer that we we're not at the position to be able to to be able to give you that. Um, I think I, I think I, I can only answer the the sort of the principal part of mm -hmm. your question in in quite a general way as well, which which is to say that 
the very reason why actually those powers are concurrent powers mm -hmm. is that is so that there actually can be a sensible and cooperative uh, way of way of of working, way of of, of deciding where where such things need to be done. Um, uh, I, I fully hope that within that uh, there, there is actually a, a sensible and, and sort of suitably um, speedy procedure for, for, for doing what needs to be done. Can you give examples of specific areas where you think regulations will be required are, are preferable at a UK level as opposed to a Scottish level? Well, I can refer, of course, to the, the frameworks analysis, which, which has been done and, mm -hmm. and, and obviously very much public. Uh, and which also I should say, and, I, and I, Mr. Simpson will have heard that I said this upstairs in the committee, to have arrived at that analysis actually represents a considerable body of work by uh, all of the administrations and, and by officials, which I think should be should be commended. Um, the that analysis, uh, you know, comes from stems from principles uh, which, which have, have clearly been agreed, which 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 explain why you might need to do something at the level of the UK, whereas other things might might not need that. Uh, I, I read out actually at the other committee this morning. I read into the record that that of course those principles were agreed in October at the JMCEN, and the the uh, list of examples that I gave began with those circumstances where you would want to be able to protect the UK internal market and that's obviously a thing where you would want to be able to act uh, um, uh, UK wide rather than necessarily uh, separately. Um, I would expect that some of those principles would be uh, would be serviceable to, to, to the question you're asking um, but as I say the um, the way ahead uh, I, I think um, is is framed by the um, uh, framed by the the bill as amended uh, as amended by the Lords last night, it is underpinned by that frameworks analysis. But there is, of course, uh, still plenty to do to to to. Um, I mean, just quite simply, get our sleeves rolled up and get stuck into the amount the, the amount of secondary legislation that that uh, will require. Okay. Okay. Um, Stuart. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, Secretary of State and Minister. Um, so in the event that, uh, that the Scottish Parliament actually refuses uh, consent uh, to the bill, <coughs> um, which is a possibility, I mean, first of all, uh, would you respect uh, that decision? Uh, but also, uh, there's the possibility that uh, partial consent uh, is provided. And it's been suggested to the committee that uh, it, be, it would be possible to provide for the continuity of retained EU law and the correction of deficiencies by relying uh, on a mix of powers uh, in the Scottish Continuity Bill uh, and also the EU Withdrawal Bill. So, in, in your view, is, uh, is this mix of powers workable? In my view, the best outcome is that we can still, at this late hour, reach agreement uh, with uh, the Scottish Government in relation to the approach to the EU Withdrawal Bill and uh, that uh, this committee and the, the Finance and Constitution Committee feel able to uh, recommend to Parliament that they grant consent and that Parliament does grant consent. And that's, that's what, how we are approaching this matter uh, at this time. I'm not going to you know, speculate on uh, other outcomes I didn't uh, in, in the other uh, committee. Uh, we hope our appearance uh, today here at this committee and at the other committee will play a positive part in allowing the committees uh, to take an approach uh, of recommending uh, that a, uh, a legislative consent motion be granted and that the members of the Scottish Parliament, and you know, Mr Russell has also always been very clear that this is a decision for the Scottish Parliament, it's not a decision for the Scottish Government as to whether uh, consent be granted, that that consent will be granted and that, that's where the focus of our attention lies. Uh, well, I, mean, I, I was in another committee this morning, so I, I'm not aware of what was actually uh -huh. discussed in the, uh -huh. in the one. Well, I've repeated what I've said. I've repeated what I said upstairs. I think Mr. Simpson. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so, so just the, uh, I, I think we all accept that the, the best outcome uh, is for uh, an agreement to be reached. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but as things stand, and it's quite similar actually to the uh, to the, the, the Scotland uh, bill when that was going through its process yes. um, right up to the mm -hmm. right up to the wire. Um, do you anticipate uh, that uh, first of all a deal will be done, uh, but secondly, uh, I mean, I mean, what are your uh, are your um, contingency plans in terms of if consent is withheld from this Parliament? My experience is that I is that things go to the wire, however hard you try. To, to reach agreement, and it isn't just in relation to matters that affect the, 
uh, Scottish Parliament, Scottish Government uh, uh, agreements across the piece appear uh, to require to go to the wire. Indeed, our friends in the EU used to stop the clock uh, in order to extend the wire. I, um, you know, the third reading of of the bill uh, is currently scheduled uh, for the 16th of May, and clearly, uh, you know, within that time scale, uh, we would be looking uh, uh, it, it, for agreement to be achieved if it can be achieved. At the moment, uh, we've I think set out clearly, and I hope uh, 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 the minister and I did again today. You know, the UK government position, Mr Russell set out uh, uh, Scottish government's uh, position, as indeed has the First Minister. We've had, we had a very uh, productive discussion yesterday on a range of issues at the JMCEN, uh, and where we did agree that you know, our doors were open for, an, for continued dialogue, and, and, and that's, that's where we are. So uh, anything that this committee or others can do to add some momentum to that. But, you know, we would need to see something that hasn't previously uh, been suggested, uh, I think, to uh, uh, take things forward. I think just, just on that, <coughs> I think I'm quite sure, and obviously, uh, Secretary of State used to be obviously a member uh, of this uh, parliament. Uh, so I think you will understand yourself in terms of uh, how important uh, members actually view uh, this Parliament mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, and the devolved uh, powers that the Parliament actually has, and so when, when it came to the the, the proposed or well, the amendments for um, clause uh, 11 um, and parts uh, parts B and C of that, I think, I'm sure you, you can understand why uh, why certainly the Scottish Government uh, would be uh, concerned about that, but also many members in this Parliament would be concerned. The very reason that we've made very significant changes to Clause 11 is the issues that have been raised uh, by uh, members of this Parliament, committees of this Parliament, uh, by members of the House of Commons, House of Lords, uh, and we have made very, very significant changes to uh, our bill. And I'm satisfied, as the uh, uh, Welsh Government is satisfied, that uh, this is a, the, the, the clause that has been uh, put forward respects the devolution settlement and doesn't in any way uh, threaten that. And you know that's uh, last night in the debate. You know Jim Wallace, who I think everybody would recognise, is one of the you know leading advocates, proponents for the creation of this parliament and served with distinction as deputy first minister. You know, was very clear that the arrangements that had come forward were fair and reasonable in relation to these specific uh, issues and didn't, uh, and didn't uh, in any way prejudice the devolution settlement. And you know, I, uh, obviously that's the view I take. Okay. Move on, Mr. Move sure. Okay. okay. Um, Bill Bowman. Thank you, Convener, and thank you, Secretary of State, for that useful summary. I have a couple of longish questions which hopefully will have short answers. Um, but the long questions will be for Chloe, <laughs> I would imagine. The, short answers are, you know, like <laughs> um, uh, the committee previously recommended that further consideration be given to basing the powers in the bill on a test of necessity rather than of appropriateness. And we understand that a non-government amendment which makes such a change for the exercise of UK ministers' powers under the bill has been made at report stage in the House of Lords. Would the government look to amend the bill, making equivalent change to the Scottish Minister's powers under the bill for the reasons of consistency? And just before you answer that, um, this was a change that was made in the uh, continuity bill yes. here mm -hmm. as a result of our recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr Bowman. Um, un unfortunately, I don't think it is a short answer uh, to that question, uh, try as I might. Um, I mean, I, th I think I think actually the, the, the government's position on, on on what has taken place in the Lords in terms of uh, you know in, in that instance of a vote that un unfortunately we 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 did not win. Um, you know, our position on, on sort of the, the, the set of the, those instances is 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 that obviously we would uh, you know we, we find that that disappointing. We will reflect on the, the debate that took place uh, in the Lords um, now. Uh, as you say, there are some there is some sort of a double question of consistency here, isn't there? There's the, as you say, Mr. Simpson. There's the question of consistency about what you you had asked for in in, in that context, but also uh, about what should be true between 
uh, UK government ministers and 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 Scottish ministers. Um, now, the procedural answer to your question, Mr. Bowman, is that uh, as the uh, the bill moves from the House of Lords uh, um, back into the back back to the House of Commons for what's known as ping pong, and you know we have to sort of fin finish off the work in the UK Parliament. Um, Obviously, that position will be considered, and, we're, and, and the government would, will have to consider what, what it what it will um, offer at report stage and off, offer back to the to the House of Commons. I can certainly say uh, I can certainly say here to, to this committee that we will give certainly give careful consideration to, to to your views and the arguments you've put forward for why that change um, is a is a sensible one. Um, I think I think the arguments we have made a, against that change are also. Uh, quite clear in that um, legally speaking there can be occasions where you might have to make a choice between two things that could uh, either be seen as necessary and, and therefore the word appropriate is the uh, is the the um, uh, simplest way to allow for the the right judgment to be made in those in those cases these are arguments that have been well rehearsed and as I say I'll, I'll certainly undertake to to give um, give more consideration to that given your question here today that sort of sounds to me like a maybe, but veering towards no. Well, as I say, unfortunately, it's not possible to give you a short answer to that question. I'm sorry. So the, the second question then is, the committee also recommended a change to the parliamentary procedure for the power in Schedule 4 to create or increase fees and charges in connection with functions which public bodies in the UK take Thanks. on exit day. The recommendation was that the power be subject to the affirmative procedure, not just for new fees, but also for significant increases to existing fees. Does the government propose to table amendments to achieve that change? Um, I believe not. A, not not a, not a, uh, not not as as things stand. But um, I'm very, uh, as I said, actually in answer to the previous question, uh, I'm very happy to take that to give it give it some thought, given that you've raised that question here today, uh, and I'd be happy to come back to you. Uh, with 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 that thinking. Useful, um, Mr. Finlay, you wanting back in? Yeah, just a kind of general question. Yes, that that's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, It's really about the reason we're in this position. Mm -hmm. um, because the reason we're in this position is because, effectively, commitments that you you, you gave Mr. Mandel and the Commons to resolve these issues were reneged on. Um, and that has meant that this committee, other committees, this mm -hmm. parliament, um, ministers, yourself, has had to go into extended periods of work and negotiations um, and scrutiny because that hadn't, that commitment wasn't delivered. I mean, have you got anything to say in relation to that? Well, I'm very clear, Mr. Finlay. I gave a commitment that we would bring forward an agreed amendment in the House of Commons. I wanted to do that. I think it would have been much better to have been able uh, to have reached an agreed position in the House of Commons, but within the time scale uh, that we were operating, that wasn't achieved because I place a great deal of emphasis on agreement. Of course, I could have brought forward uh, our own amendment, but we wanted an amendment that could uh, reach agreement with the Scottish Government, with the Welsh Government, we have worked really hard to try and achieve that. We thought we were very close to achieving that. Your Welsh colleagues ultimately uh, did agree reach agreement uh, with us. Uh, the House of Lords uh, in their uh, deliberations have accepted that we have brought forward something that was fair and reasonable, having made significant movement uh, from where we were uh, originally. We're still not in a position uh, to agree with the Scottish Government. I'm disappointed uh, in that, but I'm, as I've indicated to the convener, I haven't given up uh, trying on that. But I'm committed to the extent that it is at all possible to working on the basis of agreement, and therefore I didn't act unilaterally. I s continued to work to get agreement. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, think it. Yeah. You're off there because okay. ti time is really short, um, and I want to let Mr. Arthur in. Secretary of State, you rightly highlighted earlier that the decision of legislative consent will be one for this Parliament to take. And that's a decision this Parliament is going to have to take within the next two weeks. Can you say categorically that if this Parliament withholds consent, the UK Government will not impose frameworks on this Parliament, on Scotland, against the will of this Parliament? Uh, well, I, well, I think there's a number of um, issues in there. So let's work 
uh, backwards. I've been very clear that we're not about imposing uh, frameworks. We're about seeking to agree uh, frameworks. I'm the, very clear the, the, that you're the seeking... Piecing, the current piece of legislation isn't, of course, about the frameworks. It's about uh, freezing the current arrangements. That is, the current arrangements that apply right now here in Scotland. That, that's what that... That's what that's about, and we, I think, uh, based on discussions today, we need to just get everybody absolutely clear that the legislation that the Parliament is being asked to consent on isn't about new frameworks. It's about 24 areas where we're saying we want things to remain the same as they are now after we leave the EU. Yes, the and I of want which will be frameworks. If this Parliament does not grant legislative consent, will the UK Parliament overrule? As a member of the UK Government, will you recommend that the UK Government overrules the will of this Parliament? Yes or no? My position is quite clear. No, it's well, not clear. Yes, I'm asking a straight is. yes or I, no, no question. No, because I, I, my position is clear, because I don't... You know, I, I don't want these I know sort you don't of want confrontations. I'm asking I want, you a question. I want to I'm work going to, to uh, jump in as the convener. Uh, Mr Arthur, Mr. please Mr. don't Arthur. interrupt when somebody's answering. And I'm going to come on to Mr McMillan after you finish your answer. My focus, Mr Arthur, remains on getting agreement with the Scottish Government, persuading even you uh, and uh, this committee, the committee, uh, the Finance and Constitution Committee, to come to a view that they can recommend uh, consent and this Parliament granting consent. That's what my focus is on uh, over uh, the next uh, two weeks, and that's what I will continue to do. Mr Arthur, Mr mm. Arthur, we're coming on to Mr McMillan. We've got time for one more question. Thank you. And uh, Secretary of State, in your letter on the 5th of April to uh, Michael Russell, <coughs> me, on, in Section 3.2 of that, regarding the restrictions on delegated powers, it, there's, a, there's a part of this that, that talks about uh, we would expect to add any gaps found on the list. Uh, and that, that's certainly uh, concerned me. That right. seems to be that, uh, that, uh, that the UK government uh, could then, uh, uh, could then kind of add to the, the list of 24 uh, at will at some point going forward. Uh, can you explain that, please? Well, with very short time, I have ex I did answer, as Mr Simpson will know, that question very extensively uh, upstairs in, in the Finance and Constitution Committee, so you'll be able to get the record of that. But I also committed that n that would that would be done on the basis of that intergovernmental uh, agreement, which is on the basis of agreement, if there were to be any changes either way. But, but that then means, come back to Mr Arthur's point, if there is no consent from this Parliament... So how could there then be the agreement uh, for this to then take place? Well, that, that's an intergovernment. We've set those, the list out in an intergovernmental agreement. There was an extensive debate as to whether the list should be set out in uh, primary legislation. I think all parties, even the Scottish Government, were the view that the intergovernmental uh, agreement was the best way because that allowed flexibility. But what I can commit to you is that we will uh, seek to uh, any changes both ways in terms of taking things out uh, would be done on uh, the, the basis of that agreement, which is by seeking agreement. Okay. Uh, I will check and the and there'll, there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll be more. Ex there was a more extensive dialogue, so you'll be able to, yeah, to yeah, reference that, Mr. McMillan. Okay. Thank um, you very much. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, members, and thank you both for coming. Sadly, um, time is up. Um, we have to finish up, and so do you. Um, so. Thanks uh, again for attending. Um, I'll suspend the meeting for a couple of minutes to allow you to leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.